Hello my honeys, it's Emmy. I was just on Chef AJ. Literally the broadcast just wrapped up, so that's why there is just stuff everywhere. Woo! But in today's video, by the way, hi guys, my name is Emmy. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Emmy. I'm a nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program where you work with we, with we, you work with me as well as a mindset coach and a nutrition coach so that you can lose weight on a starch-based, plant-based diet. So if you're interested in that, go to healthyemmy.org. And if you want to see me eat potatoes every day for this entire month, then click subscribe because that's exactly what I'm doing, honey. So in today's video, I am showing you the broadcast that I just did with Chef AJ where I show how I cook all of my potatoes. So this is a recording from Chef AJ's channel where she and I had a, had a Zoom call and I showed exactly how I cook all of my potatoes. So let's get into it. Hey everybody and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host Chef AJ and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I'm so excited about today's cooking demo because it's coming right after Hi everybody. Dr. I'm Chef John McDougall. Today is March it's the most perfect food and it has plenty of protein as you could have learned in the lecture if you had watched it but it's available now on my YouTube channel if you want to see Dr. McDougall's lecture on protein or his lecture on the potato. This is going to be done by Healthy Emmy. It's my first time meeting her. She's the creator of the Slim on Starch program. She has a wonderful YouTube channel, and she is going to be teaching us really potato perfection. And all the recipes she's demonstrating will be available after the broadcast as a PDF on her website, which is healthyemmy.org. Please welcome her to the show. It's so nice to meet you. Hi, AJ. I am beyond thrilled and honored to be here, especially on the same day as Dr. McDougall. I mean, come on. I, I mean, it was synchronicity. I mean, this was not planned because he had asked to come on and you were already scheduled and it's like, this is perfect because I know you're a big fan of him too, aren't you? Oh, a huge fan. And, you know, we are in cahoots. I said, listen, why don't you go on Chef AJ's show the same day as me? No, I wish. <laughs> well, when did, because you're, you're pretty young to know all this. When did you first hear of Dr. McDougall? Sure. So I'm 25 and I first heard of Dr. McDougall six years ago when I was 19. That is when I started a whole foods plant-based diet. And I was actually known at college as the potato girl. So that's how long I've been in this game for. So you guys can trust me on everything that I'm going to say today because it's been years in the making. Well, wait, so you're going to college and somebody recommended his book because, I mean, you are you know, most of the people that know him were a little bit older. So how does a 19-year-old find out about Dr. John McDougall? I'm curious about that. Yeah, sure. So I discovered Whole Foods Plant Based just on YouTube. What I eat in a day videos are very popular. And just being on YouTube, they started to pop up on my subscription feed. So I started to watch some videos about a whole foods plant-based lifestyle. And it just made sense to me. I went to college to become a math teacher. So I like to think about when there are answers to things and a whole foods plant-based diet seemed to be the answer to everything. It made sense to me, and when I do something, I do it. So I decided that day, you know what? I'm doing this. I'm going whole foods plant-based, the whole shebang. So I went all in six years ago on a whole foods plant-based diet, had a tremendous time, and what really did it for me was I so badly wanted my parents to be on this lifestyle, too. I have wonderful parents. If you've seen them on the channel, they are terrific people. And I want them to be around for a long, long time. And my father, bless his heart, he was pushing 230, 240, 250 pounds. And I didn't know if he'd be, if he'd be around forever. And so I thought, how can I, how can I convince him? He's not going to listen to his 19-year-old daughter. What does she know? So my dad loves to read. And I found the starch solution. And I said, you know what? I'm going to give him this book and let's see what happens. And if you have seen him on my channel, you know that about five years ago, he transitioned to a starch solution diet and lost over 60 pounds off all of his blood pressure medication. Um, and that's what really did it for me. That's what made it sticky. 
was seeing the effect it had on my father and then um, eventually helping my mother as well with lowering her cholesterol, triglycerides, and now pretty much the whole family is starting. Yeah, well, neat. Well, I mean, I sure wish I knew this when I was your age. I would have been unstoppable. So we have the same favorite food. I'm not sure if we have the same favorite kind of potato. Mine is, if I had to pick, like really, if I got a gun to my head, it would probably be the Hannah yam, but, but it's so close, you know, it's so close. You are so right. And I have to tell you, AJ, as of recently, the past few days, that has been my potato of choice because they are just spectacular. And for anybody watching that's never had a Hanny Yam, I would say if you've ever had Honey Nut Cheerios, that is what they taste like. So if you're trying to get off the cereal and you like those sugary cereals, then have yourself a Hanny Yam in the way that I'm going to tell you how to bake it today. And you'll never go back to that other stuff. People still, I mean, you know, look at you. I mean, you're not overweight, obviously, and you eat a lot of potatoes, but people, it's still, you You could talk until you're blue in the face. Even when Dr. McDougall gave his talk about the potato and they were like, well, I can't eat potatoes. I can't eat starch. It'll make me fat. I'm, and it's like, eh, it's a okay, dry, crazy thing. I hear you. So what I actually decided to do is I was sitting on the couch the other day eating my potatoes. And I go, oh my goodness, for all of 2021, all I've eaten is potatoes. It was like the third day of 2021. And I go, you know what? Why don't I do all potatoes for January? And I'm going to document it on my YouTube channel. So everybody watching right now is getting a little bit of a sneak peek that tomorrow on my YouTube channel, I'm debuting. I'm eating only potatoes for the month of January to show people that we can befriend the potato. So I'm going to be living proof this month. So you're not going to have any vegetables at all? Nope, just potatoes. With, I will say, because I'm being totally transparent, I am having cinnamon. Because I think that a sweet potato is not complete unless there's cinnamon on it. So I am adding cinnamon. <laughs> Well, that'll be very interesting. See, because I would miss, I would miss to have the, I, I eat more starch than vegetables, at least by calories, probably more vegetables by weight. But I think I would miss, because Hannah Yam needs, for me, it needs that broccoli with it. It's just the, mm. I hear ya. <laughs> when you're not doing an all potato month, what would you say is your ratio of starch to veggies to fruit? It doesn't, you know, and that's in terms of calories, but more, like, because I, Dr. McDougal says we should eat 90% starch. That's a little high for me. I probably 75% starch and then the rest vegetables and a little bit of fruit. That's sort of the way I roll. Yeah. Well, I'm just like you, AJ. I can eat vegetables for the day as long. As a runner, I do need to make sure that I get enough in me. Um, so if I were to do, you know, equal amounts of volume wise of starch and vegetables, I probably wouldn't get enough in me to feel amazing on my runs. So I would say, you know, if, if I were to eat three meals a day, two of them would be half starch, half veggies, then the last one would be a little bit heavier on the starch uh, so that I can make sure that I am running to the best of my ability. Do you do any races or 10Ks or marathons? Yeah, so I, yeah, I am a marathon runner. Um, I want to make sure that I'm able to run for the rest of my life. And so for that reason, I, I'm not doing any races at the moment. I would love to be an ultra marathoner, which is anything longer than a marathon. Um, but I really just run for enjoyment and to feel lucky to have such a healthy body to run in. Nice. So how many different kinds of potatoes do you have there? All right. Let's get into it. You ready? <laughs> All right. Well, you know, AJ, maybe you might know. I heard that in Peru. There, is, there are like hundreds and hundreds of different types of potatoes. That's going to be somewhere I need to go post-pandemic is Peru to see all the different types. I, I heard Dr. Milton Mills once say there was like 400 at least. That's, that's crazy. That's insane. You can eat a different potato every day and it would take over a year to see them all. Well, Perfect. why don't you do a video on that? Go to Peru. That's a good idea. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So I have decided to present these from most flavorful to most boring, even though the potato is never boring. Um, but I'm going to start with the one that has always been one of my favorites, which is the Japanese sweet potato. So I have tried so many different methods to cooking all of these different types of potatoes, and I used to wrap them in tin foil. What I didn't like about wrapping them in tinfoil is that there's a lot of research out there that says tinfoil is not that great for our health. 
there's, and I'm no researcher, I'm no doctor, but I have seen some things about it pointing to perhaps Alzheimer's disease. It's just some scary stuff. But what really, really bugged me about my tinfoil use was the amount of waste that I had because I eat a lot of potatoes. And if you opened up my recycling bin, it was just tinfoil on tinfoil. Yes, it was being recycled, but even still, it's not a you know 10 out of 10 when you recycle something. There is some, some stuff left behind. So I wanted to find a new way to bake my sweet potatoes so that they were super, super gooey, but they didn't require any waste or any tinfoil. So actually everything that I'm doing today is zero waste, which is awesome. That was one of my goals for 2021 is to reduce my waste as much as possible. So starting out with the Japanese sweet potato, I learned something the hard way as I tried to go to a zero waste method of cooking potatoes. And it is that if you put a naked potato into the oven, you have to put holes in it. <laughs> so I nearly the other day, I mean, should have changed my YouTube channel name to Healthy Cyclops because I opened up the oven and nearly lost an eyeball when the potato exploded in my face. <laughs> so if you hear anything on this broadcast, please poke your potatoes with, with a fork. So what you do is you're going to take the Japanese sweet potato, make sure, of course, that you have washed it. You can get yourself some fancy veggie wash. Um, I, I just use water and you can get a potato scrubber on Amazon and just scrub off anything that's on the outside of it. So you take your, take your fork and you'll just stab it a few times. Why this present, prevents it from exploding, I will never know but I would not advise that you try to find out yourself. <laughs> so what you're gonna do after you have poked the potato is put it into the oven at 375 naked. And you're just gonna put it in right on the rack. Once you do this, you'll leave it in there for an hour. And then after it's been in there for an hour, you can take it out, but don't eat it just yet. The real secret to having the gooeyest, most delicious potato, which is what I have here, is to let it rest in the fridge overnight and then to end up reheating it the next day. Now I see, AJ, I'm so happy that I'm on a call with you because what you are, AJ, is you are the most glorious intersection between culinary expertise and simple cooking. Because if you go to a chef and you say, how can I make my potatoes delicious? They'll say, oh, take a nice slab of butter and put it on there. And you go, no, I can't have butter. And they say, oh, then put sour cream on. And you go, no, I don't do any of that. I'm vegan, I don't do oil. And then the, the chef will short circuit right before your eyes. So I wanna get, I wanna get some expertise from you, AJ. Do you know why this is? That when you put the sweet potato in the fridge and let it rest, the next day it is just the flavors are bursting and it's caramelized do you have any idea why okay so i, th I think it has to do with something called the resistant starch in there and they some of the doctors recommend we refrigerate them something about even dr gregor in his book it had something to do with weight loss or, or health i discovered that by accident when i was on a plane and my potato just I didn't eat it and I didn't want to throw it away. And I was like, okay, I'll refrigerate it. And then it, like you, you say, something magical happens when you cook them, chill them. And then, especially if you cook them again, like air fry them. Oh, so there's an idea. Maybe I can do that. But yeah, it's like, just, I don't know. I, but I agree with you. It's just, they, they taste better. It's, it's an absolute game changer. Um, so it looks like that was the best mistake you ever made was not eating the potato and then finding out, you know? Yeah. Cause I was going to throw it away. Cause it got a little bit squished on the plane. I'm like, yeah, but I hate to throw food out. So I repurposed it by, well, at first I put it in the fridge and then I put it in the air fryer and I'm like, wow, this is so much better than if I were just to cut it and air fry it. I don't know. And I think it has to do with, maybe there's somebody scientific that's watching that understands this whole resistance starch thing, but you're right. It's, it's really good when you do it that way. And, you know, I learned something from chef Bravo, uh, you know, I know you have to have some kind of way for heat to escape, but instead of poking them, I just take, take the tiniest cut on both ends, the tip off. It's just a oh. tiny cut. And then the, the heat escapes both sides. 
but there's that's just another there. option. And hey, AJ, because you are the pro, stop me at any time during this presentation with any tips you want to add in. If this could be a collaborative, what's the best way to cook a potato, I'm game for it. So, so yeah, with the Japanese, what I do is I poke it, or as AJ said, you can cut off both the ends, put it naked in the oven, right on the racks for an hour at 375 Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius. But potatoes are very forgiving. Um, when I lived in Australia, I had a, I didn't know Celsius. And even if I did, I had an oven that didn't have any numbers on it. It was just turn it on to hot. And if you think back in the day, these people just had a fire and their potatoes, I'm sure turned out just fine. So yes, put this in the oven at 375 for one hour after cooking it or cutting off the ends. And then as we just talked about, the key is to put it in the fridge overnight and then have it the next day. If you put it in the microwave, it will heat up very, very quickly. Additionally, these guys freeze so well. So that is an awesome tip. You know, I get these huge 20 pound boxes from Hawaii Veggie Farm, huge amounts of potatoes. And what's so great is that you could bake all of them, the entire 20 pounds, put them in the freezer, and then you can just throw them in the microwave. Um, so that's a great tip. It's also a great way to save energy as opposed to turning on your oven every single day. You know, that will run up your, your electricity bill quite high and, you know, waste a lot of energy. So what you can do instead is on Sunday or whatever day you have off from work, bake a ton of these potatoes, put them in the freezer, and then you're good to go. Because as if you watch AJ, you know that your environment has to be conducive to your goals. So if you take one Sunday, you know, a Sunday well spent is a week's content. Take one Sunday, do everything that I'm doing here, put it in the freezer, and you've done your future self a favor. Um, so I know that Dr. Lyle was on the other day talking about structural changes. So if you're looking for a structural change to make, you just got yourself one. On Sundays, bake up all of your sweet potatoes and put them in the freezer. All right, the next potato that I'm talking about is one that I would love to get AJ's take on, and it is her favorite, the Hannah yam. The Hannah yam is delicious. How it differs from the Japanese is the Japanese has a little bit more of a chestnutty flavor, and it's a little bit more fluffy. So I'll cut open the inside of the Japanese so that you can see it, and then we'll compare it to what we see in the Hannah yam. So by cutting open the Japanese, oh, it is so dense. It's beautiful. It's nice and dense. It stays together. Now, a Hannah yam, I might have trouble even cutting this in half because it's so gooey. It reminds me of French toast. You know, when you would dip back in the day when you'd have the French toast sticks and you dip them in the syrup and it would get nice and the good kind of soggy. That's what I think the Hannah yam is like. And if you're really, yeah, if you're really, really lucky, it'll start to drool a bit, if you will. And that means all the sugar is coming out of it. So let's see if I can even, you know, I don't even try to cut these in half because to be honest, I'll eat them like a burrito. But let me see if I can cut this in half. Oh, I wish you could hear it. I wish I had a microphone on this because you can just hear there is so much moisture and it just, oh, it is so delicious. I could put this whole thing in my mouth right now. So I cooked this. I actually cooked these this morning. So I cooked these this morning. Those are more potatoes. I cooked these this morning the same way that I cooked the Japanese. So 375 and I put them in for an hour. And then they went in the fridge. Let's see, it's two o'clock here in Boston. So they went in the fridge at about 10 a.m. Uh, so they're in the fridge for about three hours or so. So that's really all you need is to put them in the fridge for about three hours. And they are so unbelievably gooey. So let's see what's going on here. Yeah, those are good. So I cooked the Hannah Yam the same way as the Japanese. Make sure that you poke holes or you cut them off, please. I don't want anybody losing eyebrows because of this demonstration. So please make sure that you poke your holes in them. 
and I cook those the same way. So AJ, how do you cook your Hannah yams? Pretty close, Emmy. I, like you say, first I wash them and then I, instead of the poking, I just, the, the little tip off the end and I do 400 for about an hour. And sometimes I do it for an hour and 15 minutes if they're very, very large. Mm. That's something you have to be careful of. If you undercook them, it's not a pleasant experience. You know, sometimes in the middle, they can be a little bit tough and it'll taste a little bit bitter. Um, so like I said, though, potatoes are so forgiving. So it's better to go longer than to go shorter for sure. Yep, I agree. And I just, then I, then I just shut the oven off. I actually cook them in my Breville air fryer, but I cook them on the roast setting. And then when it's done, it just, I just let them sit there for, I, I let them cool naturally. I don't refrigerate them until they have cooled naturally. That's something that I heard from my brother is that you never want to put hot food straight into the fridge um, for, you know, bacterial reasons. So yes, let it cool before you put it straight into the fridge. I feel so bad for people that are saying they can't get the Hannah or the Japanese where they live. I've seen them even on Amazon though. You know what? I think that what I might do, and perhaps the people that can't get themselves could, could do this as well. I might try myself a little potato garden. Um, I live in Massachusetts, it's freezing here, but potatoes, like I said, are so forgiving. They can be grown in so many environments. So if you can't get them yourself, look into maybe having a potato garden. It, it can't be that hard, right? My ancestors, the Irish did. It. Hey, if, if Matt Damon could grow potatoes from his poop on Mars, we should be able to grow them in our yard, right? You know what? That's the perfect excuse for me to call up Ben Affleck and say, hey, I heard your buddy knows how to grow uh, Yeah, exactly. So when you freeze them, Emmy, uh, how, do you freeze them in a Ziploc, in glass? Because Judy says, do you defrost? them before you reheat them? That's a great question. So I discovered this one accidentally as well. Um, I had my parents coming over actually and I had all my potatoes out and I was just cleaning up very quickly and I just took the potatoes and I threw them straight into the freezer, not in a bag or anything. Um, and I forgot they were there. And then a couple weeks later, I opened up the freezer. I go, oh my God, my potatoes are sitting here in the freezer. Um, and I put them in the microwave and I go, let's see what happens straight from the freezer into the microwave and they reheated beautifully. So I put them naked into the freezer and they were just fine. I'm sure you'd probably be safer off putting them in a bag or something, but, um, went perfectly well, just putting them straight into the freezer. Uh, Karen says, where in Boston are you finding Hannah Yams? Whole Foods. Um, they have them at Whole Foods and they also have them at Wegmans. I find that a lot of times people would check their ethnic markets because not everybody has a Whole Foods. I've never seen Hannah at Trader Joe's. I've seen the Japanese and the Murasaki, but, but a lot of times at the ethnic markets, whether they're a Latino ethnic market or an Asian ethnic market, will have the Japanese and the Hannah and at a very low price as a matter of fact. For sure, for sure. And when I lived in, because I have a lot of people that follow me from Australia, because I lived there for about a year, and they'll say, you know, where do I get it? We don't have Trader Joe's, we don't have Whole Foods. Um, and I would see them, I would see them just like you said at the markets. Um, and I actually would see them at Kohl's too. So if anybody watching lives in Australia, they have them at Kohl's. Um, and for the Canadian, the Canadian watchers, um, I've heard that at Asian markets, you can find them. Um, and you know, it's, you'll, you'll notice there are no orange sweet potatoes here because once you have the Hannah and the Japanese, you just can't go back. That is so funny that you say that. Cause that is my, that is my least favorite unless it's fries. I do like the orange ones. If it's sweet potato fries, you know, somebody messaged me the other day because they said, uh, rank your favorite sweet potatoes. And so I uh, oh, the Japanese and the Hannah and somebody said, well, where's the orange? And I go, oh, I don't even mess around with this. And somebody messaged me back and she said, agree that they're like waterlogged sweet potatoes. <laughs> and I think that's the perfect description. They're too pedestrian. I mean, if that's all you can get, I'll eat it. But it's, it is like, it is my last, my la least favorite potato, I'm sorry to say. I, I enjoy them in Thanksgiving when they're mashed with cranberry sauce. But, you know, it's like you say, once you have a Hannah, you're kind of spoiled for everything else. <laughs> 
for sure. I was cracking up the other day listening to um, Dr. McDougal and his wife, Mary, arguing over the difference between a sweet potato and a yam. I thought that was hilarious. I don't know the difference. And I think that you took the right approach, AJ, by saying, you know what? I never get in the middle of a marital squabble. So you guys figure it out. Um, If you don't mind me asking, you mentioned your significant other isn't plant-based. How do you make it work? Because so many people struggle with that, you know? Absolutely. So um, I am very blessed to be in a relationship with a wonderful young man who I kind of had the advantage that when I met him, I already was this way. Um, And when I met him, I knew the stakes were high because I said, okay, I think I want to keep this one around. I, I like this one. And so I said, all right, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna run a little test here and see if he passes this test. And so I said, I'm just gonna be unapologetically myself because I think that is a very, it's a very attractive characteristic to be unapologetically yourself and to be confident and secure in who you are. Um, and I don't drink alcohol either. And so I met him in, you know, in our early 20s and I just was the way I was. And I said, this is the way I eat. I don't drink alcohol. And I thought to myself, if he accepts me, then he's the right one. And if he doesn't, then he's not worth my time. Um, And he passed the test with flying colors. And so I have that advantage that I, you know, entered our relationship this way. I know that a lot of people, though, don't have that advantage where they perhaps are married to somebody that they've been with for 30, 40 years. And now all of a sudden they're not making the meatloaf anymore and and all of that. And to those people, I say, you know, you're supposed to grow and change and evolve together. And we're not supposed to stay the same our entire lives. We get new hairdos and new jobs and we meet different places. So remember that, you know, and embrace change um, in, in changing alongside your significant other. But I will tell you, AJ, that uh, my significant other, he loves the Japanese sweet potatoes. And in my freezer, I have a huge stock of vegan junk food. He is not vegan. He's not even close. He's a garbage disposal. He'll eat anything that's in front of him. So I'm trying to lure him into the plant-based world. Um, But ultimately, I think that the purpose of being in a relationship is not to become the same person or to date yourself, but instead to to support one another to be the best that you can be. You know, I support him to do whatever it is that he wants to do, and he does the same for me. So when we sit down and eat together, which is quite often, our plates look different, but that's the least interesting thing about our relationship is what we eat. You know, I want to talk about our day and um, laugh and all that kind of stuff. And what's on our plate? You know, who cares? So long as we are happy and healthy, that's the most important thing. Nice. Yeah. All right. So moving on to a potato that I'm not so sure about. Um, and it is the Stokes Purple Sweet Potato. Now, this the, pro, the the Stokes purple sweet potato does not do justice to all the other types of sweet potatoes, and especially not to the Hawaiian or the Okinawan, which is purple on the inside. But I cooked this one the same way that I cooked the last two, which is poke them with a fork, um, put them naked onto the onto the rack in the oven, and why don't we break this guy open? Oh, I'm quite impressed actually. Um, Wow. All right. So maybe you guys should try this one out. I wasn't too sure about it, but wow, this is quite a magnificent color. Um, So this is the Stokes purple sweet potato, and it really is just this beautiful, vibrant purple, Um, which reminds me, you know, look for all these colors in the food that you eat. If it has this beautiful, vibrant color, you can only imagine the vitamin mineral nutrient panel on this and the amount of antioxidants that are packed in this thing if it's this beautiful. Um, There's a reason why this food is so beautiful because we want to be attracted to it to eat it. It has to be good for us. So this is the Stokes Purple cooked the same way as the last two. AJ, what are your thoughts on the Stokes Purple Sweet Potato? First of all, color-wise, they are the most beautiful. And I find that I love them, but they're inconsistent. So sometimes they can be the sweetest thing I've ever eaten, even sweeter than the Hawaiian. And other times I get duds. And when I get a dud, I get upset. (laughs) I hear ya. 
I hear you. You know, funny thing is I got this one accidentally. And this was not even supposed to be part of the presentation, but I do Instacart and uh, they accidentally brought me this one. So I thought, hey, I may as well include it. Um, so yeah, we got that one. All hey, right. Julie Weber looked something up on National Geographic and she said there's not 400 kinds of sweet potatoes. There's 4,000. Wow. All right. Then I got to get down there. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, cool. So next up is the Hawaiian sweet potato. Um, now, I'm not quite sure. In, in my eyes, the Hawaiian and the Okinawan are the same thing in my eyes. And I would think that makes sense because Japan and Hawaii are quite close to one another. So perhaps that's how it got to Hawaii. And in the Hawaiian soil, it might taste a little bit different. But if you've had an Okinawan, it's pretty similar to the Hawaiian sweet potato. So these guys are quite deceiving because on the outside, they're a tan, they're a beige, but on the inside, they are this beautiful, beautiful purple color. Um, now we've been talking about hit or miss and sometimes these can be hit or miss, but let me tell you how I cooked these guys because these were a little bit different than the other ones. So what, what's different about the Hawaiians is that they're very dense. So the other types of sweet potatoes, especially the Hannah, it just kind of melts in your mouth. And it's almost like cotton candy. You know, when you would eat cotton candy or fairy floss, it would just like dissolve on your tongue. That's kind of what happens with the Hannah yam and with the Japanese, especially with the Hannah yam. But these guys are different because they're quite dense and they're, they're a little bit cake-like. So because they're a little bit more dense, they're gonna take longer to cook. And if you put them naked into the oven, then they might not cook to the center. So I used to always wrap these in tin foil, but when you're ordering them online and they order you all these little guys, the little fingerlings, that's a lot of tin foil that you're gonna be wasting. So I thought, you know, I have to think of another way to be able to cook these guys. I'm throwing them into the oven. They're staying hard on the inside or they'll dry out. It just wasn't going well. So I discovered another way. And what that other way is, is I'll put them onto a baking sheet and I use my Silpat baking sheet. Um, it's just a silicone sheet that you can get on Amazon for like 12 bucks and I'll line them on the sheet and then I take a Pyrex bowl, just any oven safe glass bowl and flip it on top of the potatoes. So let's say, you know, this is where all my potatoes are lined up. I just take this and I put it on top like this and it's going to give a steaming effect to the potatoes. And it's what's going to allow the potatoes to be cooked on the inside because that was the issue. They were just so dense that the heat couldn't penetrate the middle. So I put those in the oven and I put them in the oven for about an hour and a half. And then I take them out of the oven or turn the oven off and just let them sit. Um, and I really think that the key to these guys is that you gotta let them sit. You gotta put them in the fridge. Otherwise they'll still have that dryness to them. Please do not try to microwave these. You can, that, you know, they can be cooked that way, but if you microwave them raw, they really dry out. It's not, you know, it's really not worth it. Um, so yeah, I ordered those online. I've never seen them in person at a market. I get them from hawaiiveggiefarm.com. That's where I order them online and they get delivered straight to your door. It's fantastic. Uh, so that's where I get these guys. So again, 375 in the oven on Silpat with a Pyrex bowl over them. And I put them into the oven for about an hour and a half, um, take them out, put them in the fridge or just let them sit. And I'm not sure I've mentioned yet, but all of these, they got to be paired with cinnamon in my eyes. Um, if you are a big chocolate person, then perhaps you could put some cocoa powder or cacao. Um, you know, that is a stimulant. There is a little bit of caffeine in there. So if you're sensitive to that, perhaps don't do it at night because then you might be up the whole night. Um, but it is a delicious way to, to top off the sweet potato. AJ, any words of wisdom about the, the Hawaiians? 
I love them. You know, you do have to order them through the mail, which, you know, some people don't want to do. But sometimes, again, if you look at those ethnic markets, I have seen them there. Some people won't eat them, Emmy, because they're not, quote, organic, because in order to be shipped from Hawaii to the mainland, they have to, I don't know, is it irradiate them or something? So some people aren't comfortable with that. The best thing is to go to Hawaii because they're everywhere. Every 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 store sells those. It's like the it's very common, and that's what I love about Hawaii, and that's why I'd like to live there. Just to oh, yeah. I hear you out with um, out with Dr. Hawk. That's a good reason for you to go visit her. Um, beautiful. So yes. Oh, and if you are concerned about organic when it comes to potatoes, what's great about potatoes is that. They have such a thick skin that if you are only to able to get the conventional ones, I get the conventional ones. I don't buy organic. Although I think, to be honest, the ones from Whole Foods, I think that they are organic. Just that's the ones that they have. I don't seek out organic ones. If you are nervous about organic because the, the skin is so thick, you can peel off the skin and it's unlikely that the pesticides have penetrated to the inside of the potato. So um, if you want to give these a shot, you can peel them so that you don't get whatever it is that they spray on them. All right, moving on to one of my favorites of all time, the gold potato, the yellow potato. And as you can see, I have all of my yellow potatoes sitting in water and I'm gonna drain them out right now and put them into the strainer. All right, so I've taken my gold potatoes and I've put them into the strainer because they've been resting in water and they're gonna go into my air fryer. So, what kind of air fryer do you have? Uh, the, this is the Aleko Homes. Can you believe I don't have a Greville? You know, me of all people doesn't have a Greville, but I, I've had a lot of different types of air fryers and I really only make potato fries in them. I don't really put anything else in them. So this one does the trick, but you know, do you think, is the Breville really, is it a big game changer in comparison to the other? Um, okay, well, I can see that you have room for it to the right of your oven. It's it, what it what the Breville does is it allows you to cook more than just one serving. So if, if it's just you making it, the, those, those smaller ones are great. But what's nice is because I live in the desert where it's very hot, the Breville, uh, it preheats faster than the oven and it doesn't heat up my whole house the way the oven does. And also does other things. It's a toaster. It can, it can dehydrate. So I love it. I, you know, I know it's expensive. It's like $400. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, in Massachusetts, maybe I should keep using the oven because it's freezing here. Um, but I hear you yeah, that the, the tough thing about the air fryer is that you can only cook so much. Um, so I am doing, you know, like three or, or th three or so shifts uh, to get enough. Then you might want the Breville because some people put three trays in. I only do two. So you can, you can cook quite a bit at one time. So I like it for that reason. Also, what I like about it is I get really busy sometimes and I burn things in my regular oven and I haven't heard the timer, but the Breville, whatever you set it to, it literally shuts itself off kind of like an instant pot. So that's kind of cool. Oh, well, maybe, you know, my birthday's next month. Maybe I'll send this broadcast to my boyfriend and say, do you think of any birthday gift ideas? And 20, 25% off at Bed Bath & Beyond. I know people say the coupon says you can't use the coupon for the Breville, but you can. I have bought one for myself and one for a gift. And in the store, they've taken the coupon. You know, they the are so nice there. I swear, you could bring a coupon from six years ago and they would accept it. Bed Bath & Beyond, they really are nice people. So that's a great tip. Wow. And that's a hundred bucks. You know, yes, if I up, and, and in Williams-Sonoma, if you're willing to open up a credit card, which you don't necessarily have to use, they'll give you 25% off too. So there's ways to save on the Breville. And sometimes the Breville even puts themselves on sale. So you just have to kind of look. And you know, it is an investment in yourself, ultimately, you know, it's, you buy the Breville now where you have medical bills down the line. So yeah. I would rather yeah. have the Breville. You have one of those little bags where you can quickly cook the potato in the microwave. Yeah, yeah I do have one of those and it, it's for emergencies and it's for traveling. Um, whenever I travel, I bring it with me so that, you know, if I need to throw some potatoes into the microwave, uh, the only thing is that it does dry it out a little bit, which I know some people enjoy, but I like my potatoes nice and moist. Yeah. yeah. 
But like, like you say, the, the, what I like about it is it just keeps them warm. So I, I'll use it just oh, as a warming bag. There's an idea. I like that one. I'm going to recommend that. That's a great idea. Um, beautiful. So, and those are Bed Bath & Beyond, like five bucks for one of those Potato Express bags. So yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, beautiful. So the reason why I'm using the gold potatoes for the fries is that they're nice and creamy. And what I did as well is I put the, I cut them up and then I put them as you, as you saw, they were sitting in a bowl of water. Uh, this is a tip that came from my brother and he's, he has a lot of culinary expertise. And he said something along the lines of it pulls off the excess starch. And what this means is that when you cook it, it's not going to be a scenario where you know how sometimes you put something in the air fryer and it's not cooked on the inside and it sort of snaps. It's just kind of, a, it's not so great. But by putting it into the water, it absorbs a lot of the water so that when you cook it, it's nice and moist on the inside. So with the gold potatoes, what I've done is I chop them up into fries. I put them into the nice big bowl of water and you can let that sit overnight. I wouldn't go, let it go any longer than that. But um, this is a hack that I used when, when I was a teacher. And I mean, the hours of a teacher are ridiculous. I would cut my potatoes before school. I would put them in the bowl of water. And then when I got home from school, all I had to do was drain it and throw it in the air fryer. So that's a great system to get yourself into. If when you get home from work, you're like, I just can't be bothered to chop everything up. Uh, so that's what I would do. I find that sometimes when you soak them, they actually get crispier. I found that as well, because um, I was doing some experiments this week uh, to prepare myself for this, and that definitely is the case. So with that being said, if you do have them soak in water, you're going to want to keep more of an eye on them in the air fryer to make sure that they don't burn. So I put them into the air fryer, and I just press the chips button. And what the chips button does is 400 uh, for 25 minutes. I do find that sometimes that's a little bit too long um, and 20 minutes does the trick. Also, if you do let it sit in the air fryer, if you don't open it up, they can get a little bit soggy. So make sure that once the air fryer goes off, you, you open it up um, and don't let it humidify. Um, you gotta let it dehumidify. So that's what I do for my potato fries. Now, if you don't have an air fryer, I wanted to present another way to make fries that is uh, zero waste. So the other way, um, and you saw I pulled these out of the oven, is using a sill pad and a baking sheet. And these are actually the russets. Um, the russets are great for using a sill pad and putting in the oven. So this is so easy because you don't have to flip them when you use this method. So this method Oven was at 375. 375 has been the name of the game. It's been what I've cooked every single potato at. So I put the oven to 375 and put the russets straight on the sill pad. This is one of those fancy sill pads that's you know made in France. My mom gave it to me. Um, but like I said, you can get them on Amazon. I think I saw them for like 12 bucks, and you know it could be at your door tomorrow if you have Prime. All you do is cut up your russets. So everybody knows what a classic russet is. It's the nice white starchy potato. And put it on the sill pad, put it in the oven at 375 for 35 minutes. And that is all you do. It is so easy. You do not have to flip them. You don't have to take them out halfway. Just put it in there for 35 minutes and you're good. Um, and so we have our beautiful, and, and they, they do get crispy. And, you know, I don't know if leprechauns go in there and, and fix it up, but they're crispy on both sides. So as you can see, you know, it looks like they've been in the air fryer. Um, so if you don't have an air fryer, that is a zero waste way to cook yourself some potato fries. So yeah, that's everything. Those are all my potatoes. Yeah, they have this thing called, I, I, um, it's a, it's a, it's, I think it's called a crispies tray for people that don't have air fryers where it kind of, has the tray kind of with the holes that they can use to cook in their oven. And, and I had one a long time ago. It seems to work pretty well. Yeah. And then, and then uh, another thing you could do is I got this as a gift for my uh, brother's girlfriend is I got her the crisp lid for the Instant Pot. 
So if you have an Instant Pot, you can buy a crisp lid, which makes the Instant Pot turn into an air fryer. And she said that it's tremendous. I don't have one myself, but I've heard that that's another great option too. Yeah. So your program is called Slim on Starch. How yeah. can eating starch make us slim? <laughs> Well, I, you know, I've been lying to you this whole time. They had to roll me in here. I've gotten so big on starch. Um, but, you know, if, you, if you're a viewer of Chef AJ, then you know that starch is so necessary when it comes to a whole foods plant-based diet. Because what starch is, is it's the perfect matrimony between calorie density and satiety. So things like potatoes, what are these 400 calories per pound, you know, rice, 500, 600 calories per pound. If you're trying to just do this whole foods plant-based diet on vegetables and fruits alone, it's not gonna work out. It's just way too low in calorie density. We have to have the starch in there because from a molecular standpoint, it's a complex carbohydrate, it's a long chain polysaccharide. So you're actually gonna feel full and satisfied. And then from the calorie density standpoint, it's so low in calories that you're able to fill up, feel satisfied and satiated as the hours go on and you haven't eaten that many calories. Because at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people like to believe that there's magical food, like potatoes are the magical food. You can eat, you know, 5,000 pounds of them and you, and you won't gain weight or bananas are the magical food. You can just eat bananas and you won't gain weight. But at the end of the day, it does come down to how many calories you're eating. Um, you know, you could lose weight on Twinkies if you only eat two Twinkies a day, but that's not sustainable. So what starch is, is it's sustainable and it allows you to eat in abundance while not eating too many calories, but feeling energized and satiated and full. That's great. And yeah, and, and for like, I, if somebody really didn't want to eat potatoes, there's other starches, there's beans, there's grains, there's the winter squashes. I know you're a, you're a big fan of the winter squashes, aren't you? Yes, you know, it's kind of an abusive relationship I have with the kabocha squash because it is so, it is so hit or miss. I mean, AJ, talk about hit or miss the kabocha, but I can offer some tips. If you do want to have a good kabocha squash, the uglier it is on the outside, the more beautiful and delicious it is on the inside. So <laughs> the same thing for watermelon, the uglier it is, sometimes the sweeter it is. Yeah. So if you, if you are looking for a good kabocha squash, you want it to be heavy. You want to pick it up and say, whoa, that's a lot heavier than it looks. If you pick it up and it feels light, that's no good. Um, and you, it want, you want it to have a big, nice spot on it. The color of the spot on the outside, you know, kabocha squash is green. The color of the spot on the outside is indicative of the color on the inside. So if it has sort of a yellowish spot, then it's going to be yellow on the inside. You don't want that. But if it's this nice deep orange on the outside, then it's going to be this nice deep orange on the inside too. And the deeper the color, the more tasty it is. I found that this year, at least where I live, the kabocha squashes are so tiny. I used to be able to get these giant ones, like eight pounds, and now they're just snivelly little squashes. Oh, <laughs> I know. So people are asking what you put on your potatoes. Is cinnamon the only condiment? Sure. So cinnamon always goes on the sweet potato. That's a non-negotiable. Um, it's a sad day if I don't have my cinnamon. As far as these potatoes, my favorite way to eat them when I make the potato fries is to wrap them in lettuce. Because when you do that, the lettuce is watery and crunchy in comparison to the warm potato. It's just absolutely delicious. Now, what I want to say is that just because I do that and I don't put on salt or ketchup or anything like that doesn't mean that you should do that. As Dr. McDougall says, whatever is going to get you to eat the food, do that. You know, so long as you're not putting oil or any animal products on. Um, so, you know, Dylan and he has your Well Your World sauces. Those are terrific. He has the ketchup. He has the barbecue sauce. Those are awesome. If you want to put a little bit of salt on the surface of the food, be my guest. But once you've been eating this way, AJ, you know this, once you've been eating this way for such a long time, you have a different set of taste buds than you once had. If 15 year old me were eating this, it wouldn't go very well. But at 25, having eat, you know, eaten this diet for six years, your taste buds adjust to it. Nice. Somebody's saying, what do you do when you get those green, those like green spots on your potatoes? Maybe those sure. are the eyes growing. Any advice for eyes? Yeah. So two separate things here. If the potato is green, 
don't eat it. That is, you know, you should not eat if the potato is green. Um, that could be dangerous. Don't ask me why. I just know that you shouldn't. <laughs> so if there's green on the outside, that is a no good potato and it could be even dangerous to eat it. If there are the eyes on it and it gets the spuds, that's okay. You can just pick off the spuds and once they've been taken off, they're okay to cook. But if you want to make sure that you don't get the spuds on there in the first place, the reason why they might be sprouting is because they're probably being stored with onions. Onions give off a gas that makes the potatoes sprout. So don't store your onions with your potatoes. Instead, store your potatoes with apples because apples actually give off a gas that pre it prevents the potatoes from rotting and from sprouting. So I know a lot of people, I don't know why, people always store their potatoes with their onions, but my dad has been doing it. And you know, at 62 years old, I'm not gonna tell him to do any differently, but my dad always does it. And I just see it and I go, you have to stop doing that. Wow. Do you have a special kind of cinnamon you like or any cinnamon will do? I buy my cinnamon from the dollar store because it's a dollar. <laughs> Nice. So Alice says, when cooking big batches of potato, do you refrigerate first and then freeze or do you put them directly in the freezer? That's a great question. So with the Hawaiians, I really don't want the Hawaiians to go bad because it's like Christmas when they finally come and the box shows up to my door and I get 20 pounds at once. Those ones are definitely going to go in the freezer. But the ones where I could just run to the store and get more, I can just go to Trader Joe's and get more of the Japanese. Those ones I'll just put in the fridge. So really it just comes down to how many potatoes you're eating and how accessible they are to you. If they're not that accessible, then you're gonna to wanna to utilize the freezer. Um, but if you're able to get them on a regular basis, then just put them in the fridge. I wouldn't keep them in the fridge for more than three days though. After three days, you're, you're rolling the dice in terms of the bacteria that can be forming. Right. Uh, we have a nice comment that you're so petite and cute. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Does it bother you when people comment on your appearance either one way or the other? You know, I, it's a lot of projection. Whenever somebody is making a comment about somebody else's appearance because they want the, the spotlight to be taken off themselves. Um, and there's this great Kurt Cobain saying, you know, everyone laughs at me because I'm different. I laugh at them because they're all the same. So at the end of the day, um, you know, we just got to embrace who we are, be proud of who we are, be secure with who we are. And as I said earlier in the broadcast, it's the most attractive thing to be completely confident and secure in who you are. Um, and I'm sure you've heard the plant-based doctors talk about before that we have a very skewed idea of what normal looks like because two out of three people um, are, are not in bodies that would promote health. Um, so we're just so used to seeing that. You know, what's funny, AJ, is... My dad was overweight his entire life, his whole life. And then at 55 years old, when he went on a starch-based diet, he finally got down to a healthy BMI. And he was, you know, unrecognizable. And people would go, oh my God, you look way too thin. His mom would say, Timmy, you look sick. Um, but his BMI was 24.9. He was barely in there. But in comparison to the 250 pound old him, he looked different. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting because I lived my life as an obese person for 52 years and a slender person only for eight. And it's funny because people that meet me now, nobody ever comes up and says, oh, my God, you're so thin. You know, I mean, that's never happened. But people that but but in comparison, it's like, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, right. And you know what else? You know, what we look like is the least interesting thing about us. And we can train people how to talk to us. Um, so if somebody makes a comment about your appearance, instead of making a comment about their appearance or double, doubling down on that, make a comment about their energy and their mood um, or what it is that they do. And so if somebody says, oh my God, you look so thin, say, do I look happy? Do I seem energetic? You know, and, and change the game toward that. Because like I said, what we look like is the least interesting thing about us. Yeah, it's so funny. It just depends who, who says it and how they do it. But if they say it in a snarky way, I'll go, well, that's what I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the potatoes. Deborah says, is it okay to store potatoes in the fridge before cooking them? That's a good question. I don't see why you couldn't. But I will tell you this. The, oh, I'm glad that, that Deborah asked this. Great question, because what you don't want to do 
is don't cut up your potato fries and then put them in the fridge. If you cut them up and put them in the fridge raw, they'll turn black and they'll rot. I learned that one the hard way. So if you're going to put them in the fridge or freezer, I really think your best bet is to make sure that they're cooked before they go in there. So that's the one downside to potatoes is you can't pre-chop them and put them into the fridge. That's why I had them soaking in water. Great. Well, Amber says, I think healthy Emmy is gorgeous. Kristen says she loves Emmy. You got a lot of people watching that have had success on your program. So you know, that's wonderful. Denver says, where do you store your fresh potatoes? I have like a, I don't know what it is. It's from Tupperware. It's like this black thing with a cover and it's in the pantry. I don't know what it's I would put them right into the pantry. I like to take them out of the bag. Um, you know, I have a bunch of these. I'll show you just like any of these bags that you would buy them in, but I like to take them out of the bag because they look nice and pretty in the pantry. And I, throw the bag out and I so wish I could find a way um, to get them in bulk without buying plastic, but it's not an option. Um, but I just put them right in the pantry. And what you want to keep in mind is to have as few barriers as possible between you and the potato going in your mouth. So believe it or not, you know, having the bag on the potatoes, that's a barrier. Get as close as you can to having it be fully cooked. Um, you know, there was a study done in which they put grapes onto the counter after they had been washed and picked and they were nice in a bowl, just in an open bowl on the counter. And then they put a bag of grapes in the fridge and they said, who's gonna eat more grapes? Which household will eat more grapes? And it was the, of course, where they were right on the counter, right to be seen. So putting this in the back of your pantry, that's not gonna do you any good. You wanna get as close as you can to this, fully cooked potatoes, hopefully in your fridge that you can just put right in the microwave. Absolutely. The no barriers between the potato going in your mouth. <laughs> I love that. I, I just think roasting really is the best way. I mean, I've cooked them in the Instant Pot and I love my Instant Pot, but it, there's nothing like slow roasting them to give that caramelization. Well, we know why, AJ. It's because it's removing more of the water. So, you know, it's it's the the amount of calories gets more and more and more dense when you put it in the oven as opposed to putting it um, keeping all the water in there, but I'll take it. It's way more delicious. <laughs> People are asking if you're going to have a master class this year. Oh, very sweet. Um, you know, tell me what you want and I'll make it happen. That's what I love about, about what we do, AJ, is we can do whatever we want it to be and what people say they need, you know, we'll make it. So if somebody wants a master class, tell me what you want it to look like and I'll make it. Nice. Well, thank you for your, the work you do in getting people not to be afraid to eat potatoes. It's, yes. it's going to be a fun month. So like I said, I'm only eating potatoes this month. And I think you know what I'll be eating the rest of the day. Um, so I'm going to be putting that on, on my YouTube channel. I bet you you're going to crave vegetables at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For sure. Thank you so much, AJ. I have so much respect for you. Oh my God. Well, thank you. You are adorable. It was so nice getting to know you. And as always, if you are still watching, the secret word for anybody who's still watching is cinnamon. So if you're still watching, comment cinnamon. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Woo!